If you're wondering whether or not you should update to the latest NVIDIA driver 537.13, then this video is for you. Because in today's video, I'll be comparing 537.13 versus the previous driver 536.99. So sit down, strap in, let's go. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, as mentioned in the intro, I'm going to be comparing the latest driver and I actually added an extra driver. So the latest driver 537.13 versus 536.99, which was a previous driver, which against 536.40, just to make the benchmark a little bit more extensive. So guys, before I get started with the video, I'm going to ask you just to head on over to my YouTube page. Guys, if you are subscribed, please just make sure that uh, you have that little notification icon selected. So that when I do drop a new video, you are notified. It really will help me with the algorithm um, and getting my videos out there. And then if you're not subscribed yet and you do find this content helpful, please do consider subscribing by the end of the video. And once you do, go ahead and select that notification icon as well, please. So guys, what I will do is in the description of the video, I'll put a link to the Game Ready Driver Forum. It basically just gives you uh, updates on all the complaints on the latest driver. And as you can see on this driver, I'm not going to get into it because I actually find this latest driver to be a little bit of a disappointment. I haven't experienced issues. The performance is just a little bit, a bit of a step backwards. But you can see there are multiple uh, complaints here. I didn't experience any of these but I will link this in the description. So I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This doesn't have to be a long video. So all my games are tested at medium settings, except for the newer, heavier titles. I do test on GTX 1650 laptops. So yeah, as you can imagine, um, I struggle in the later games. So Ratchet and Clank is on a mixture of um, very low and low. Um, Remnant is on low. Uh, Dead Space Remake is on low, August Legacy on medium, and then Resident Evil 4 Remax on a mixture of medium and low. Everything else is at medium. Where FSR 2.0 or 2.1 was available, I used the quality setting. And then, guys, I get questions to do online benchmarking. I did try it out. Unfortunately, the results, unless you got an in game benchmark, the results are all over the place. So it's not reliable data. And also, I don't really enjoy them. But as you can see, all my games I tested here are single player titles. It's just more reliable data. And then lastly, I do test on a GTX 1650 laptop. Uh, generally, the performance of each driver is similar on any GTX laptop or card. But once you get to RTX hardware, it is a new technology. So it uh, does respond to the latest drivers differently. So I can't give you an accurate um, I can't give you accurate information if you're on an RTX card, I can just make suggestions. But anyways, let's get to it. It doesn't have to be stretched out too long. 537.13, not a bad driver, just not a great driver. Um, it's actually a step back in performance from 536.99, which was a little bit inferior to 536.40. Bear in mind, this is on a GTX laptop. If you're on RTX, um, I believe the 30 series have been atrocious for RTX. But guys, just to get to the nitty gritty, when I add up all the average FPSs over 13 games, my total average FPS was 900 divided by 13. So my average FPS per game is 69.23. And then when I when I add up all the 1% lows, my total 1% lows was 647 divided by 13. So my average 1% low for this driver on, in this benchmark that I did was 49.77. And once I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS, my stability for this driver is 71.89. So not terrible, but it is a step back from 536.99. I'm not gonna go through the whole rigmarole, but you can see uh, um, the 1% lows are higher for 536.99, as well as for 536.40. Um, in fact, the 1% lows drop, not terribly, but there is quite a drop in 1% lows on the latest driver. That's why, to end this video, do I recommend 537.13? No, I do not. So do not update to this driver. If you're on a GTX platform and you play a single player offline, I highly recommend staying on 536.40. And the feedback I've been getting is that it's actually got pretty decent latency as well. 
uh, with regards to ITX, I can't make a um, like a educated um, suggestion for you guys because obviously I've never tested on ITX. But guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. And if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now is the time to do so. Guys, it's people like you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good week. Cheers.